Okay, here we are on CNN. Wow, I'm still so excited about this. And uh, the, our panel tonight, we had Academy Award winning actor Christoph Waltz is on this show. MSNBC host Ari Melber and ABC News analyst Sarah Hesker. Okay. Um, first of all, you just said to me when you sat down, I mean, the last piece I was doing was about people in show business who hate each other. Have you been on sets like that? Where... Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. I've been in sandboxes when I was five, right. playing with kids that I hated. It was about playing together, right. not about hating someone. But my point was, you know, you can hate each other and still make something great. And they've Absolutely. made many movies like that, and government should do it too. Okay. Uh, what, speaking of movies, what does the panel think of the climate activists who glued themselves to the red carpet? <laughs> at the Berlin Film Festival. Have you been to the Berlin Film Festival? Not when someone was glued to the <laughs> <laughs> Are these stunts effective or just an annoying disruption? <laughs> I... Better I... that than throwing soup at priceless works of art. I'll take the glue on the red carpet. Nobody cares. Was it... But was it, it natural glue? <laughs> Vegan. Um, it's about sniffing glue. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, YouTube star Mr. Beast is receiving backlash for... Are you familiar with Mr. Beast? Everyone familiar? I'm not. Okay. Mr. Mm -hmm. No? He's super popular. He's a I big, have, I, yeah, he is very big. big. I have heard of Mr. Beast. Yeah. I've never been to Cracker Barrel, but I've heard of Mr. Beast. <laughs> he star yeah. is receiving backlash for funding cataract surgery. Oh, I did read this story. For a thousand people. He funded, yeah, a thousand people needed cataract surgery, and this guy's making a fortune as a YouTube star. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> if you can make money and do good for other people, isn't, okay, I don't know what that question is. But he got a well, lot of criticism. He got criticism. Because he that's, used it for ratings, and it's like, I think the people who got the cataract surgery no, are too pissed about no, it. No, that's not what the, a lot of the tweets were about, and these are from some, somebody in the Washington Post said this, somebody, I think at BuzzFeed said this. They were criticizing him because their point is that um, you should not try to correct yourself if you're blind or deaf or something. That's like ableism. Like it's not, it's not worse to be blind. It's just different. And I, I would say if that was me, please help me. Yes. <laughs> so I, I... It's also more involuntary surgeries. <laughs> but really, that, that, I mean, that's... Does the same thing go for literacy? Ah. <laughs> Great question. Um, Nikki Haley has called for politicians over 75 years old to, oh yes, to be required to take a mental health competency test. <laughs> I wonder who that's aimed at. <laughs> um, both of them, right? I, mean, I think it's both. I think she's trolling. It allows her to draw attention to Biden, she's in a Republican primary, but it's a subtle hit on Trump. They're both older politicians, they have every right to run. People, the competency test is a really long campaign, and people will assess how they seem. But shouldn't we do that for everybody? Why just over 75? Because, I, 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 I mean, <laughs> over, over here, my, my 35 year old. Out the House of Representatives. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the, there's only one age requirement. The Constitution has a minimum age, and that was because they were so worried about people passing things on to their famous sons at the time. Uh, there's no maximum age, but we have that for pilots and other things. But I, again, I think it's hard. If you've covered these things, you know how it is. It's hard to run for president. It we're going to see how they do. And then you're going to decide at the debates and other forums whether they seem like they got it. Well, and as Don Lemon told us on CNN, women actually can't run for president because he said we're past our prime once we get to our 40s. But since you have to be 35 to run, it's like this really tight window between 35 and 40. But, but it presupposes that's the only way you can be mentally incompetent. I mean, I would take a guy who's 90 and forgets a few things, but he's seen a lot. In his life and has the experience. And his, of course, if you're, if you're, if you have, you know, Alzheimer's and you're not there and you don't remember who your wife is, obviously that's a different story. But as opposed to somebody who's 40 and doesn't have a lot of experience, and yeah, so. yeah, I think you're right. It, what's funny is I think ageism is real. We see it in a lot of industries. Oh, and we see it on a sexist basis as well as I think you mentioned. Uh, which is fair. I just think that what's funny is the one place that you see less ageism in our public life would be politics. When you look at Pelosi, yeah. 
McConnell, yes, the current president, the last president who's running for re-election. So while I do think it's a problem, I think we should be less ageist. We were talking about civil rights earlier. That's one of the things people discriminate on. Having said that, for whatever reason, incumbency, fame, other things, donor class. And the voters are the older. Voters are, the voters keep going back to the, some of the choices that are that are upper in the age bracket. There's a movement in Europe going on right now started by an older gentleman who had to deal with his bank. And the movement's called I'm Old Not Stupid. I subscribe to that. What was he dealing with? Just, with his bank, because of the, oh, I see. the, 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 the bank had changed some online, right. uh, you know, and he said that this can't be understood. And then they treated him like an idiot, and he said, no, 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 I'm old, not stupid. Well, there, there is a lot of making you try to feel like you're stupid when you're old. I mean, they purposely do things, you know, why do I need to, what's that thing where you take a picture of the... The QR code? Thank you. <laughs> I, I did do it. I find that for menus to be the most annoying thing in the world. I did do it to get my car out of valet. I'm not kidding. That's a cracker barrel. How about, when, <laughs> how about when you have to go to fill something out and it says, like, pick the photos with the pickup trucks? And so it's like, you have to prove to this robot that right. you're a human. Think about it. Uh, and then you get a problem, and it's a um, New census data shows that California and New York saw a mass exodus, well, mass, I don't know. Uh, no, well, 500, that, well. Of people with their populations dropping by around 500,000 people. And it doesn't say over, is that in a year? Well, maybe it is, or the last couple of years. Can anything bring cost of living down? Desirable places. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Texas, heard our Florida, Tennessee, no state income tax. Right. Nice weather and something else. Well, is something this else about those states? Is this a referendum on the way we govern here in California and New York? I mean, obviously, this is, looks like a blue state, red state thing. I mean, a lot of it is big offices in big cities. Like I live in Brooklyn. A lot of those big Manhattan towers haven't filled back up with people, but also that was an urban plan built a long time ago, and maybe it's evolving. I totally get it. I mean, in all fairness, I think you're, it's fine. If people don't want to be in these super expensive cities and go somewhere else, especially if they don't have to commute to one of those skyscrapers that often, then fine. But I think in New York, like, I don't, from what we can see anecdotally, I don't think all those buildings are going to fill back up. They're not. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, I think one of the good things that happened with the pandemic was when time stopped, we got a chance to sort of, like, reassess. And we were saying to ourselves, why do we need to go to work for five days? And, it, and we don't. Not from, you know, you, you probably should work five days, but maybe you can get your work done in four days. They found that when people work 80% of the time, if they get paid the same, they do the same amount of work. Because most people, in an eight-hour day, they work three hours. So why not, and you know, save all that commuter time? I, I love, we come to the office once a week now. Well, obviously today to do the show. But uh, <laughs> other than, yeah, <laughs> you're welcome, it was a pleasure. Uh, but other than that, once a week, and that's, I feel that's perfect. We could do the rest of it at home. I don't need to see my, my lovely staff, I love them, but like once a week is perfect. Here's the problem. And I mean that in the, Totally agree, but we are losing something. I mean, I work from home, so like, take this criticism for what it's worth. But like, our generation, we already got mentored, we already got trained. I think about like lawyers, like law firm partners aren't going in anymore, and those associates aren't learning how to do a trial. God knows we don't learn it in law school. So like, we don't quite know what's gonna be lost when we have an entire generation who doesn't have anyone actually telling them how to do their jobs because we're all home in our PJs. Yeah, I, I, think, I think both things are true. <laughs> PJs! Uh. <laughs> I think both things are true. Like, I remember the very beginning of COVID with the, with the lockdowns, people were like, what the hell? Like, I can't stay home. Like, I need to go out. And then by the end of COVID, everyone was like, what the hell? I can't go out to work. I need to stay home. And we should like, nature. But I think you need a mix. You need a mix. Well, you have to go out to the set to make a movie. So you're going to be out, and we're going to go to the movies together, right? Not at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.